Hello everyone, my name is Braden Gerard, and today we're gonna to look at how you can create custom controllers inside of Strapi. So I have a brand new Strapi project set up here. I just created it with NPX Create Strapi app. I just ran it and I have the brand new account set up here with no content in here yet. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna create a content type. So we'll go over here and we'll create a new collection type. We're gonna call that to do and that and hit continue. Now I'm gonna give that to do a description and I'll sit, hit add another field. And then I'm also gonna give it a Boolean, which is whether or not it has been completed. So complete. And that's a very simple to do object that we'll create here as a collection. And Strappy's just gonna restart now that I've created that. So we can go back over to our code here. Actually first let's add one to do in here just so we have something to test with. So we'll create a new to do. We'll say walk the dog and we'll set it to false. It has not been completed yet. We'll save that and we'll go over here and see that we now have a to do with the ID of one and it's walk the dog. So that's good. Uh, oh, we need to publish it. So we'll publish that. There we go. And now we have walk the dog as a to do item. So let's go back over to our code now and we can test this out to see if our to-do is working now. So we'll go over here and we'll say uh, localhost 1337 forward slash API forward slash to-dos. We'll send that request and we'll see that we get a 200 response. So let me just close down this terminal for you and we can see that we get our to-do here back with the ID of one and the attributes of walk the dog as a description and complete as false and then some generated date timestamps here. So that's all working, that's great, that's getting all of our to-dos. And we can also test out if we want to just find one to-do, we can go to eight forward slash API forward slash to-dos forward slash one. And now we get that same to-do back, but instead of getting an array like we got in the other uh, response, here we just get a single object. Okay, so we know that we can get our to-dos, but what if we wanted to get our to-dos in you know a unique way? Maybe we want to add some extra information in here, or maybe we want to do some logging whenever someone requests their to-dos. So first let's look at our controllers. So to customize our controllers, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into source and we're gonna go into the API folder and then we'll go to the to-do folder and inside the to-do folder, we'll go to our controllers. Now in controllers, we have a to-do.js and this is just the default strappy generated code. Now we can extend this and we can customize the controllers for the to-do collection by adding our own custom actions is what they're called. So to extend this, all we have to do is go here and we're gonna say comma, and then we're gonna say a, the strappy object should be equal to, and then inside of here, we can add our own custom actions. So let me just put, sorry, we need to make this this and like this and then inside of here we can add our own custom actions so there's three different ways we can add our own custom actions we can create an entirely custom action if we want so let's do an example of that first so we'll make an async function in here and we give it the name of our action so we'll call this I don't know, custom action okay um, and then we're going to receive the context and that context object will be used to get the body of the request um, or to get anything out of the request like query parameters or anything like that. Um, and then we will do a try catch here and we'll check what's in the body. So we'll say ctx.body, um, or sorry, we'll set the body. So we'll say ctx.body is equal to okay. Uh, and then we will say ctx.body is equal to Air. So if for some reason our custom action fails, it'll send back the air in the body. Uh, if not, our custom action will send back OK, the text OK in the body. Okay, so we've called this custom action. Um, now, if we want to make an endpoint for that custom action, then we have to go over to routes and inside of our todo.js, we need to add that custom action to our routes. So we can do that by creating our own file in this routes folder. So in this routes folder, we can make a new file and we'll just call it custom.js. And then inside of that custom.js file, we'll do module.exports equals, 
an object. And inside of that object, we have a property called routes. And that pro property takes an array of objects. And each object can be a route. So we'll set the method on the route to get. And then we set the path on the route to the path that we want to be able to access that route from. So we'll just say forward slash custom for our example here. And then we can specify the handler that we want to be called whenever that route gets hit, which in this case is our custom controller that we just created or custom action in our controller. So we'll say custom action, custom action, and you need to say what controller that's on. So we'll say to do dot custom action and save that. Now there's one other thing that we can do is we can give it a config object where we can configure different options with this route. And what we want to do is say auth and put that to false just so that we can hit this without being authenticated. So we'll save that. Our server is going to restart and we can go over here and we can test that out. So we can test that out by saying uh, go to the localhost 1337 route API custom. And if I send that, uh, we'll see that we get a 200 response back and the body is OK. So we can see that we're actually hitting our custom action. So I change this to OK, hello world, and we save that. And then I go back over here and make that request again. We get OK, hello world. So that's how you can add a completely custom action into a Strapi controller. Now we can also wrap an existing action that Strapi has built in. So by default, we saw earlier we can do a find on our to do's so we can overwrite that find action um, so we just say async find and then inside of that we can write what we want to write to override that action um, so that we can get the query from the find so let's go ctx.query equals um, and we'll say take the query that came in and let's also add local uh, as en. So we'll add that into the query. Um, and then maybe we continue on doing um, what the default uh, action would do. So we'll say const get the data and the meta from await, oops, from await super.find. So we call that super.find to do the default functionality. Um, and get the data and meta out of that. And then we'll say meta dot date is equal to, and then let's just say date dot now. So we're modifying here what we'd normally get back in the response. Um, and then from that, we can say return and return back data and meta. So what we've done here is we've added in the en local um, to our query, and then we did our find, um, and then we set the date to the current date and then return back that data as well as the meta information. So that modifies the existing, uh, the current find functionality, right? So if we go back over here, I'll save that and go back over to our request here, um, we can do a find on all. Um, and if we saw from before here, let me just close down the terminal here. We can see that our last find all got this meta information um, and these attributes with the ID of the object uh, of the one to do that we have in our array. If I do the request now, we'll see that we're getting back um, some additional information. We're getting back the current date here inside of our meta object. Um, and we got data with the local of English. Okay, so this is how you can overwrite uh, an existing strappy action. And then the last thing we can do is we can actually replace a core action. So here we still sort of, we still called into super to run the previous find action. If we wanted to completely do our own action, we could say uh, async, sorry, if we wanted to completely override the existing action, but with our own functionality, we could do async find one, get the context, we'll, we'll overwrite the find one action. Um, and we'll say const uh, get the ID out of the parameters. So ctx.params that came in from the request. And then we'll get the query from the context. And then we will say const entity equals await strappy. 
at dot services or dot service sorry and then we're going to call into the api to do dot to do dot find one and we're gonna get the id find by the id and the query so that's using the strappy service to go in and find one so we could do this however we like um, it's not using just the super find uh, and then we're going to get the entity out from that and then from that entity uh, we have to say const sanitized entity just so that we can make sure it's sending it back in the correct format so sanitized output entity and the context and then we're going to return this dot transform response sanitized entity so this is doing uh, what the super find would do but completely on our own so we're using the strappy service and we're saying find one with this id and this query um, and those are IDs and queries that we got out of the context. Uh, we take that entity, we run the sanitized output on it with the context, um, and then we send back the sanitized entity. So if we save that and we go over to our find one, and we see here, we're getting back this information. If I hit a send again, we're gonna get an internal server error. So I made a mistake here somewhere. Let's take a look quickly. Is my server error and we have an error and oh this does sanitize oh it's just sanitize output not sanitized so i made a typo here um, sanitize output and then save that and make sure this is running again good and we'll go back over to find one send that request and you'll see you'll get back the same response here that you would from the built-in strappy find one action but we're completely doing it on our own here. So this just allows you to add in any type of customization that you want to override um, the default find one action. So that's how you can customize controllers inside of Strapi.